Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now last week we had a look at the Bridgewater Carnival. The idea of several dozen different displays with over 20,000 pixels in some cases on moving vehicles was quite something. And if you haven't seen it, be sure to have a look at the video, which I'll put a link to up here. Now back to matters closer to home, we're going to look this week at firmware updates. Now firmware is the software that is built into these boards and actually what makes the boards tick. In the case of a Falcon F16 here, the whole thing runs on firmware, which enables all of the different functionality on the board. Now there are occasional firmware updates available for this to either fix bugs or to add additional software features. So we're going to look at the Falcons. We're also going to look at Culps. This one is a K16 version 2, the, the E-Fuse variety. And you do get firmware updates for these as well. Now I don't just mean FPP, which is sitting on the, the Beaglebone Black underneath. The board itself actually gets some updates. So we're going to look at how you update those. Now both of these different controllers run smart receivers. And if you've got a version 5 smart receiver, this one is a, an SRX1 version 5.0, there are occasional firmware updates for the version 5 boards as well. Now currently, these can only be updated via a Falcon F16 or F48, but we're going to show you how to do those as well. So we'll start with a nice and easy one. We're going to start with the Culp. So this is a K16 uh, version 2. And the first thing you need to have a look at is the actual board variant. On this one, we can see it's a K16A hyphen B version 2.0. So that's the important bit. So we'll make a note of that because we're going to need that information in a second. Now, while the Culp finishes booting, I have to add at this point that if your controllers are working for you and they're doing everything that you expect, then at this time of year, it being the 15th of November today, I wouldn't go any further. I would stop. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if you've got niggles or issues, then this is the point that you need to double check your firmware. Now I know on some of the earlier Culp K16s, there have been issues with some of the differential ports not working properly if the legacy firmware was on there. And there was a patch released to fix that. And that's the type of thing that we're looking for when it comes to a firmware update. So our K16 is up and running now. We've got an IP address on it and it's ready to go. So let's get that up on the browser. Here we go, she's up and running. So let's now go and have a look and see what's available in the way of firmware updates for this board. So I'm gonna to go to help and I'm gonna to go to Cape Info. There we go. And if we go to the EEPROM upgrade tab here, this is the point that we can update the firmware on the Culp boards. So we need to go to Culp lights, there we go. We're on a K16AB, that's it. And our version is a 2.0. And this is where we need to have a look at the board and double check what's actually screen printed on the board. So this is a version 2.0 board. There we are. Now for boards like this one, this is really straightforward because it can connect to the internet and it can download the firmware update automatically. So all I need to do then is to hit upgrade and it will do so. If your board is not connected to the internet, then you can go to colplights.com forward slash firmwares, and that's got an S on the end, and you can download the relevant firmware from there and then apply it via the file picker here. So I'm going to click Upgrade, 
there we go. So it's now going to run through and it's going to upgrade the firmware on the board for us. So that's doing that. There we go. Job done, finished, please reboot. So we can close that then, and then we can go to reboot, yes please. And there we go, that's as difficult as it is. So the board now is updated to the latest firmware, so any bugs that have been identified and ironed out should now be resolved on this one. So all good and dandy, that's our cog board out of the way. Next up, we've got our F16 version 4 here. Now the updates for this aren't quite as easy as the Culp in that you can't just do it all from the GUI, but we're going to need to download the firmware to our laptop first, our laptop or our desktop uh, first, and then we can push the file up onto the board from there. Same for the SRX board. Now at the moment, the SRX is, although compatible, with both Culp and Falcon controllers, obviously, they can only currently be updated via a Falcon board. There isn't an update mechanism to push an update to an SRX via a Culp or other board. I did double check that with Dan this morning before uh, starting this video. So let's navigate to this one. So we're on 192.168.4.3. So we've got our Falcon controller web page here. To update this one, all we're going to do is we're going to go to settings. And then I'm going to scroll down to update firmware. And it's going to pop up a dialog box for me to give it some firmware. So let's go and have a look at that. That's under my software, Falcon. 38. Uh, 38 is the latest for this particular model of uh, F16 at the time of filming. So I'm going to update that. Now I'll put links in the text down below for where to get the firmware for both Falcon and Culp boards. So you can just go and grab them straight from there. There we go. It's now completed the upload and it wants a reboot. and it's updating the firmware on the board, as we can see. There we go. There we go, and the board is now rebooting. Here she comes, upgrading firmware ESP. She's coming up. The web interface has just dropped on me over there, but it's still busy updating things here, so I'm quite happy with that. Firmware applied, erasing, so it's getting rid of the, the backup, the old one, and it's now rebooting. Here it comes. And she's now back up and running on our new firmware. So let's refresh the page there. There we go. And it's back. So that is done. Our F16 is now completed and up to date. 
Last one for us to look at today is the SRX board, which we're going to update via the F16. So still on the settings page here on the F16, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and click Update SRX Smart Receiver Firmware. Once again, we need to go and get the latest image, which I'll link to below. So there's our SRX firmware open and it is now pushing to receivers. And I can see data activity on the receiver there and we've got activity on the LED indicators for the fuses as well to say something's happening. Okay, now I think it's done. We've still got we've got three out of our four LED indicators lit on the board here. But it doesn't seem to be doing anything now. So let's go to our status. And all looks like it's good. Um Okay, pixel. Yep, I think we're all good. Now oh, we've got four up now, so I don't know what happened there. Fourth one has illuminated whilst we've been uh, talking here. So I think that's all done. So there we go. So we've updated the firmware on the the F16 and on the SRX and obviously on the Culp before. There we go. I hope you found that one useful. Please do like, share, subscribe and all of that. And if this has got you out of a pickle, then maybe you could consider buy me a coffee or even a subscription on Patreon. Take care, have fun and I hope your builds are all going well. Take it easy. Bye for now. <laughs>